Welcome to the channel, I'm Rob and today we're going to be painting a Space Wars Dreadnought. So another foray into the world of uh, Warhammer 40,000 um, and we're going to start off with a grey primer on our Space Wars Dreadnought um, and then we're going to give it a um, pre-highlight using uh, matte white. I've gone into quite a lot of detail with this video um, so you can uh, see kind of all the steps involved in it um, and you can see where I've pre-highlighted everything. Um, I would really recommend starting for this particular colour scheme on a grey primer. Um, I did um and ah about whether I should do it on a black but I felt yeah, but the final model that came out, wanting to keep it nice and bright um, and then knock it back with all the weathering, uh, that actually starting from a grey primer and doing it this way, um, uh, you know, I, I felt I felt worked. Um, you know, remember with our highlighting here that it's not realistic. Um, we're really trying to emphasise the lines and uh, shape of this particular model. Um, so, you know, lots of the highlighting will be upside down, particularly on those uh, torso panels uh, to emphasize those awesome, uh, awesome Space Marine kind of shapes that we typ typically expect with uh, Space Marine vehicles. Um, but the legs are a little bit trickier. So use this as a reference, uh, use this as a reference point. But I think that uh, on in the main, um, you know, whenever I'm pre-highlighting is two to three thin coats of white just to get that really nice uh, coverage to get the values of whatever paint we put over the top of it. So essentially it's just making it nice and bright. So you overlap this white, uh, you know, at the highest points, you know, you would overlap it three times, perhaps at the midpoint though, you know, you, you would do that once or twice. So you can just see, I'm just building up that, uh, building up that color. Uh, this matte white, I added a little bit of uh, thinner to it, but it is a really nice white and I don't find that it speckles at all this particular white but yeah just a little bit of army painter uh, thinner with it and then you know you can see here that it's not speckling at all this uh, this model as you saw right at the start is also going to be we're going to really uh, make it grimy lots lots of uh, streaking um, like I've done with uh, previous dreadnoughts the, the last redemptor oh sorry ballistas dreadnought I did was an imperial fist one and that was really uh, really grimy so we're going to use this console blue um, from the air color triad range that Army Painter does. Um, I, again, added a little, little bit of thinner, um, but it's quite a, a potent color, actually. I found that over the gray, um, much of that pre-highlight, um, you know, it, it, you could tell that a pre-highlight highlight had been used, and I think it's important to lay it down, but it wasn't as translucent as perhaps I was expecting. So um, that meant when I was trialing and you know, when I was trialing this scheme, it just means that I will have to um, adjust the shadows, uh, which we'll see in a little bit. But uh, essentially I, I, it went down really, really nicely. I just added one or two drops of thinner just to get it, get it moving through the airbrush. Um, but essentially the entire model was covered with this paint. So two thin coats over the entire thing rather than one very, very thick coat. And you can see you're starting to get this uh, build up here. Now we will adjust the colors. This is almost our mid-tone, but it does have that kind of like cold, icy feel to it. Um, you know, it's a very, very pale blue. To some extent, it, it feels as it goes down, it's got kind of some blues in. Yeah, it's obviously got 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 blues in, but it's got feels like it's got sort of lilacs in as well, bits of purple. Um, so next up, and I didn't show you the paints here, but I mixed Cardray Grey. Uh, with console blue in a 50-50 mix um, and Cartridge Grey is a really really light um, light grey from the Army Painter and just mix them together and then just further highlighted essentially over that area we did the pre-shade and this gives a really really nice blue grey you know the, what we would typically expect um, uh, with the Space Force and you can see again, you know, I'm, I've tried to put as much footage in as possible for you guys, for you to be able to see where to go about highlighting 
uh, these bits. But I think the other thing I would say, and I, when I did my Kratos course at the weekend, um, I had 12, 12 guys come on that course. And one thing I would say about that is that you really, really need to up the contrast at this very, very early stage beyond what you think is reasonable because we've got to, um, we're going to weather this back an awful lot and we're going to use you know, varnishes, we're going to use transfers, we're going to use battle damage, we're going to use oil paints and then we're going to mat it all down. So lots of the contrast that you might create might be lost. And by contrast, I just mean the, the modulation on the armor panels, you know, that dark to light fade. So go beyond what you feel comfortable with is something that that I would say here. We're going to use two speed paints, a mixture of Beowulf Blue and Battleship Grey mixed together in a 50-50 mix. And uh, you can see here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just going into the shadows with this to create that contrast. Um, and I felt once this was down, that 50-50 mix of those two speed paints, th this was the colour that I was looking for. This is a bit experimental for me as well because I don't do a lot of 40k models and I've never done a Space Wars Grey like this before. Um, so, you know, I was sort of mixing and matching and, and developing colours as I went. But you can see here, this is kind of, you know, exactly the sort of Space Wars grey colour that we're, we're looking for. And then we've got the awkward task with Space Force, which is masking off all those areas where you want, like, uh, triangles and stripes and things like that. But we can just use our speed paints uh, to help us with this process. So this is just grim black. And um, later on you'll see that I essentially did kind of white teeth along this. But this is just straight up gr grim black. And I think it's great for um, building up stripes and things like that, using uh, grim black in that way. And then I need to lay down some yellows and some reds. And because I want them to be quite punchy, I think it's important that we lay down matte white first and then um, we can overlap our um, yellows and our, our reds from there. I think that it wouldn't have a, ha have had enough punch if I hadn't used that white. I won't be using any hairspray chipping like I have in previous videos before as well. Um, you'll see what I do to get that kind of like that painted on looking a bit. But as I say, we, we want a really punchy yellow and a really punchy red. So, you know, laying down a white base coat like this just allows it to have the highest possible value um, and allows it to be as bright as possible. So I'm using uh, blood red speed paint here for the reds. It took me ages to mask off. So you will see that I won't use any edge highlighting in this video at all. But the time saved, not edge highlighting, went into the masking. I was um, uh, kind of um, doing a lot of uh, masking and you can see some teeth that I've created there and eventually I'll have to put them on over that black stripe. Uh, but I would say that one of the one of the things to get those triangles exact uh, to take an awful lot of time. So the time that you save not edge highlighting, as I say, you you will spend on and getting it all masked. Mask off beyond what you might expect. Of course, airbrushes are quite precise, but often the uh, the overspray on them is beyond what you might think. Like they go further than what you might think. And I have a very very precise airbrush, so you know, mask off further. And then we obviously need to lay down our transfers. Now, um, I think that you need to lay down a gloss varnish first, which means that the transfer will lay down nice and smooth. Some people will disagree with that. I feel very, very strongly that it's important to lay down a gloss varnish first so it's nice and smooth so we don't get that 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 any air bubbles and to some extent that ring around our transfer. And you can see me using the microsole here just with a... Um, uh, Comble bud and just layering on Microsoft. I've done lots of videos about transfers previously, so I won't spend too much time on this. Electric blue was uh, the closest color match I thought to what I'd put down in terms of just a normal acrylic paint. And what you can see here, I'm going over those transfers now. Now this is all still glossed, but I'm going over those transfers over the painted stripes, over the painted triangles, um, and then hitting it with this blue color. And it's a pretty, it's a, you can see here from the, from the video, it's a pretty close match, but I wouldn't sponge on air paints just because they're too thin. 
you want them to leave a mark behind that you don't want them to be translucent and so yeah this electric blue is perfect for that and then this gives the appearance that the stripes the triangles the transfers that they've all been painted on and they've started to wear away essentially so this is a good little trick uh, just to develop that weathering remember with weathering we layer up weathering and we do multiple layers of weathering to make it look realistic just one oil wash won't cut it right just a little bit of battle, battle damage with sort of dark oak brown for example won't cut it we've got to do multiple different layers of, of weathering to make it look realistic uh, i've used oak brown here but mixed it with a little bit of black um, and i'm just taking my sponge and we're because this is a light model it's the same as when we did the Imperial Fist, which is that we can negatively edge highlight it, essentially, which just means, yeah, sure, we're edge highlighting, but we're doing it with a sponge. So it's going to take a fraction of the time. Um, but basically, kind of edge highlighting or, or, or sponge highlighting in this way on pale models just looks, always looks fantastic. This is why Imperial Fist just looks so good uh, weathered and why Space Wars weathered up just looks so good as well. But this will create lots of opportunities for us to do lots of streaking and things like that in a bit, you know, with, uh, with some with some oil paints. Um, and I'll just try and catch as many of the edges as possible. You can see me either dabbing it on, um, you can see me picking up the edges, you can see me doing almost like striking actions with the sponge as well. Um, but just picking up as many of those edges as I possibly can. This is a really great dreadnought, actually. Um, as a, as a practice piece, you know, you can pick them up for 20, 30 quid now off eBay. You know, they really are everywhere. It's simple to put together um, and it's great for airbrushing. If you if you need more experience with airbrushing, this is an absolutely fantastic model to do it. But it's great to, um, to weather as well. There's lots of like flat panels where you can do lots of streaking that looks really effective. So this is what it looks like. And then I've given it another gloss varnish over the top. So we've given it two gloss varnish with Army Painter um, uh, gloss. And this just protects all the transfers and all the battle damage and the paint job underneath. And we can use some Burnt Umber. It's my favorite. You know, I use this for most things in some way, shape or form. Sometimes I'll mix it with some other colors. You know, with Sons of Horus, I might mix it with black just to get it darker. But for particularly light colors, I think Burnt Umber is a, is, is a great one to go to. And I mixed it a little with a little bit of White Spirit. I ran out of Tupperware containers, so I just had to use a wet palette for this. Um, and you can see that basically that gloss varnish just allows that capillary action, which just means that the gloss can flow into all the nooks and crannies. And you want to pick up all the rivets. You want to pick up all, you know, you can see here, I guess, where the smoke comes out of. Um, and what I'm not doing, though, is absolutely slathering it on. You know, that, that was common a couple of years ago with things like streaking grime, right? I mean, people just slathered it on and then took it off with a cotton wool bus. But a cotton wool uh, bud. But I'm being a bit more careful here because the moment you apply oil washes over a, a large area, it will tint the colour underneath. And I want to maintain much of that colour because I've worked so hard to be able to get it, right? So we can be a bit more careful with this weathering. And in some ways, that's quite stylistic, right? You know, you could argue, well, in a, in a landscape, you know, a battle torn landscape, it, it would, you know, grime and soot and dust would just build up everywhere. But, you know, so we can afford to be a little bit stylistic here. And then with some uh, clean white spirit, what I'm doing is I'm just um, taking away any places where I've just been a bit heavy handed with those oils, just cleaning it up. And you can see I'm going downwards with this motion because those incidental downward motions will start to create as well uh, our first layer of streaking, I guess. Like we'll do some more streaking in a bit, but doing that downward motion creates uh, some quite cool effects uh, without working too hard um, and without too much thought, uh, thought behind the process as well. So just go around, clear it up. And this is what I mean as well. If you were to slather the oil paint all over the model, you'd have a bigger clear up job to do. So just be careful at the earlier stages when you're applying those oils. And then this job is just a fraction of the time. So we want to yeah, save ourselves time at every, every step of the process. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm going in with uh, neat burnt umber and applying it to edges where I want that streaking. And so I'm going right across here. And then we take our fan brush. This is a dowel and rounding fan brush in some white spirit and then just dragging that brush down. And it creates marks and streaking, just like that. You could do this with uh, a sienna color, 
but I, I just like the effect that it creates. I like the darkness against the uh, that plate. And I like the idea that it's more grime than it is rusty, I suppose. Um, you can see me just making small corrections there. But the Ballistus is great because there's so many flat panels on this, this model that you can do some amazing looking streaking that looks super effective over those transfers, over those stripes. Um, and it just looks absolutely fantastic. But I've given you a longer bit of footage here as well so you can see kind of the entire process and where I might focus on. And remember, it's a downwards motion as well. We want to be, you know, think about where gravity is, think about rainfall, think about um, the way rain would f would fall down a model uh, is really, really important. And sometimes you'll get this wrong and you'll take away too much or it won't look right. So just you can just wipe it away with a clean cotton wool bud, clean brush and do it again, which is the beauty of having glossed it and the beauty of using oil paints. With streaking grime, I found it a little bit harder. Uh, to maintain kind of or be able to wipe it away and here I've given it um, a coat of uh, a, a matte spray with the army painter matte, matte, uh, matte varnish and this is what it looks like so it's dulled right back so we had quite a high contrast when we initially did it and lots of that has now disappeared because of the weathering now the next steps are relatively simple which is just blocking the metallics um, and you can see here I've just done kind of a basic dark gold and then I've used tainted gold, I think, for the golds. And then I've just given them another wash. I didn't bother using a varnish on them. But I've just blocked them in, given them a, a wash, and then given them a bit of a dry brush as well. Nothing too, no, honestly, nothing too complicated. And you'll have your preferred uh, metallics here. And in terms of basing, you'll have a preferred basing scheme. I just used uh, a greeny brown colour or mixed uh, oak brown and a bit of green together. And then just added more and more bleach bone and then just dry brush the base. And you can see me using some um, army painter tufts here because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some snow to this in a bit. But yeah, I, I mean, as for the metallics, I just think that you, you guys will have your preferred, uh, preferred metallics. And, you know, for a model like this, we don't need to, to, to overthink think it, really. Um, and I, as I say, I've just used two colours, you know, gold and a, a, gold and a silver. And you could use things like... Uh, um, you know, washes, for example, but because I need it to match those metallics. Oh, here we go. Here's the army, the Highland Tufts that I use there. Uh, really, really nice uh, set. I bought a couple uh, more of these because I've been using them on my own army as well. And then let's just go to to the snow. Just fast forward to the snow. So I've got some bicarbonate soda here. Army paint, unfortunately, don't make bicarbonate soda, uh, but they do make PVA glue, which is what I'm mis mixing with. So bicarbonate soda mixed with PVA glue. And you can see um, the consistency that we're uh, we're going to create. Anyway, back to the back to the metallics. Um, so um, the thing about the metallics is that you want it to be in keeping with the rest of the model. You don't want almost like pristine metallics against um, very dirty down armor plate. So once I did the base layer for the metallics, I just gave it an all over wash um, with the burnt umber. Uh, oil paints which just then made it match and then just very gently highlighted or edge edge highlighted or dry brushed uh, the edges on the golds and the silvers and didn't do anything anything more than that I don't really want to draw too much attention to the um, to the metallics really it's all about that about that gray gray plate and then once we've got a, a nice consistency for our snow um, we can lay it down now I suppose that I've gone for kind of a, a hard melted snow you know it's not everywhere I want the uh, the ground and the tufts peeking through um, but something that really does sell this is doing the um, this mix of bicarbonate and PVA on top of the tufts it really does sell um, the whole effect um, and it's also a cheap way to be able to to make scenic snow um, as well but again, it's up to you what what kind of like base color that you use. I mean, of course, you're not going to do this with like Martian red, right? But sort of neutral earthy colors just works really well with snow. Um, and then sort of green tufts also, you know, works really, really nicely rather than say a, a very dried out, uh, dried out tuft. Um, I don't, I don't, bicarbonate soda, I assume that bicarbonate soda is just the same across every every country, really, but I suppose that's my, my ignorance about understanding uh, cakes across the world, whether everybody has this, but I just, but this is just from like a local store, right? But it will last you absolutely ages. Um, 
and as I say, I'm using the PVA from the um, Army Painter basin kit uh, as well. And then just the last few details. So uh, I'm going to use uh, Bony Matter Speed Paint. Um, and then we're going to just use this on all the parchments. Now, the parchments, what I did do is I went along and um, just very, very roughly highlighted them white. And I also highlighted the, um, I guess, the purity seals. Yeah, the purity seals, that's what they're called, um, with white as well. But the, I, 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 I essentially gave them a little dry brush or an overbrush. Um, so I didn't really think it through. And the scratchier, the better, really, especially with parchment. You know, if you're if you're nice and scratchy with it, it just sells the effect of the, the parchment. But I did wait until that was dry completely before moving on to um, uh, any other areas. There are some hidden away purity seals as well, so make sure you get them on the back. Um, and just a, a note as well, I probably wouldn't use any verdigris effects on the metallics, um, particularly on the golds or bronzes as well, because you've already got a, a pale grey plate and you don't want to add more pale sort of blues and, to it. But that's just me. That's just my preference, really. Um, and then we're going to use um, our red speed paint as well. Bloody red, I think it's called. Let's just have a blood red. Blood red, there we go. Um, and then I just picked out in white the missiles. I thought that would be a, a, a nice nice effect. And then just gave them one or two thin coats of the, of the speed paint. I didn't mix the speed paint with anything. It's just straight from the bottle. Um, and they, it gives a really nice bright effect. I won't further highlight these either. You know, this is a really simple, straightforward paint job. Um, so we want to keep all the steps nice and simple because we spent lots of time weathering it so we can afford to you know, kind of cut corners on the other steps. And then I would do the actual purity seals themselves with this speed paint as well um, and just pick out the reds and they're nice pops of colour against, uh, against the blue, nice contrast um, around. And then that is it. I painted the rim black always paint them black and then did the eye lenses nothing nothing too fancy and then this is our finished uh, space force ballista dreadnought i hope it's been useful if you like the video don't forget to comment don't forget to subscribe as well guys and uh, thanks ever so much for watching and see you on the next one